Hi everyone, I'm in Colorado. It's very windy. I think a storm is blowing in or has just blown over or something. I'm not entirely sure, but the weather is not great. I hope the wind doesn't mess up the audio too much here. I'm fishing this creek that I think has a series of beaver ponds. This is one of them. I'm gonna start fishing here. I think there's just one species of trout in this creek and that is Rio Grande cutthroat trout. This is a subspecies of cutthroat trout native to Colorado and New Mexico, I believe. I think it's just those two states. I'm in Colorado now. I've never caught this fish before. I think it's known for its large spots toward the tail. Basically all cutthroats have large-ish spots as you go toward the tail, but I think this one is supposed to have especially large spots toward the tail, so it should be a pretty fish. I'm excited. I don't have a ton of time to fish before it gets dark, and like I said, the weather's closing in, so we'll do what we can. And I do have my rod and line all ready to go here. I'm fishing the dragon tail Mizuchi at its fullest length currently, which is about 11 feet. And then also with, a, with an 11 foot line, I don't know what fly I have on here. This is just the fly that was already on my line and it's already stuck in these little thorn bushes. Where is it? Here it is, I'll put an enlarged picture on the screen. It's got, let's see, white thread, grizzly stiff hackle, and I don't remember what color spindrift yarn this is. I think it's either burnt umber or burnt ochre. I don't remember, but I'll look it up when I'm editing this video and I'll put it on the screen. And of course, as always, if you wanna buy some yarn for fly tying, I've made it easy for you. Go to flytyingyarn.com and pick yourself up some yarn. I'm wearing brand new boots, by the way. My old boots, which are the Soft Science Terrafin, I've just worn through them and Soft Science is no longer around. They're, they went bankrupt. So these are the Reddington Benchmark boots, I think. This is the first time I've used them. Uh, just walking here to this spot, that's all the walking I've done in them. They seemed uh, seemed light, which is what I had hoped for. That's why I ordered them. So far, so good with these boots. They are a bit more clunky, a bit more like Frankenstein boots than my last ones, but that's fine. All right, first cast. Wish me luck. Oh, there we go. First cast. And that, that's a, let's see, that's a cutthroat. Really pretty colors. So this is the target species. That's, that's incredible on the first cast. <laughs> that makes me happy. That bodes well for this creek. Not a large fish, but really nice coloration on this cutthroat. This is one of the more colorful cutthroats cutthroat subspecies I've seen. Definitely more color than the Bonneville cutthroat or Lahontan or Yellowstone. That's up there with the Colorado River cutthroat trout and the greenback as far as colors go. All right, see ya buddy. I don't know if you can see this, but my line is dancing because of the wind. In these conditions, it's helpful to lay a few feet of line on the water so that the wind doesn't move the fly. It'll move the line, the part of the line that's out of the water, but it won't move much of the of the fly itself. I don't think I was recording when this happened, but after I released that fish, I turned the the GoPro off. I stopped recording. I always stop recording between fish. and I lost my balance as I was kneeling. Ooh, there we go. I lost my balance as I was kneeling and fell butt first into the water. So my, my butt and lower back are soaked. Oh, it was in the net. And then I lost it. There we go. Okay, okay, this one's definitely bigger. This one is, oh, eight, uh, nine inches, somewhere in that range. Beautiful fish. See ya.
Oh, fish on. Come on, there it is. That wind is unpleasant. It's later in the day and it's a little bit chilly. So, oh, I just fell into a hole. Ah, oh, ow. Now my line is, looks like it's caught in several places over here. Okay, there we go. The fly has been rescued and recovered. I'm going to gingerly watch my steps here. Okay, this looks like a good place to fish from. Stand right here, cast out that way. Let me cast close into shore first. Make sure I don't spook any fish. It's hard to cast accurately with this wind, so I'm just putting a lot of line on the water as I dap the fly, trying to trying to. You know what? I'm just gonna cast farther out. I, I, whoa! I just fell into another hole. Oh yeah, this part close in is is pretty shallow. It's like inches deep. Ooh, got a fish. Very nice. Oh, I was holding my breath. <laughs> oh, flies out. Another cutthroat. For each of these takes, except one of them, that third one over there I was a little bit surprised by. But for these other takes, I've seen the fish come up despite the murky water. Fish on. I was slowly, oh, I was slowly retrieving the fly after it had sunken down several inches. I was slowly lifting my rod tip up, bringing the fly up, and the fish grabbed on as I was lifting it up. So with this wind, I'm probably just gonna hop from beaver pond to beaver pond instead of trying to fish the actual, like, narrow flowing creek sections. It'll just be frustrating to fish the narrower stuff. But this is a nice looking pond. I can't quite see what the depth or the topography of the, the floor of the pond is. Ooh, there's a fish right in front of me. There's a fish right in front of me. Oh, I thought he had turned for it. It was like a 10 inch fish. Just cruising along right here. I couldn't see it, and so I just guessed that it had gone after the fly, but it had not. Oh, it's back. It's right in front of me, swimming the other way. It doesn't see me. It sees the fly. It sees the fly. Got him. Oh! <laughs> I got too excited. There he goes. He went after it again. That's bigger than 10 inches. That's a that's a 12 incher 
Beautiful colors. Gorgeous fish. This might be the fish of the day right here. Let's get the fly out. I'll give you a closer look. This is a gorgeous fish. Look at that pink, orange, red belly. Ooh, big old spots. That is a pretty fish. Okay, see ya, buddy. Well, that was quite the adventure, seeing that fish cruise on by, missing it the first time, getting it the second time. That's fun. Okay, that was pond number two. Beaver pond number two. Let's see if we can find a number three. Oh, ta-da. Ooh, I just saw a fish move. Maybe it saw me and I spooked it. Okay, if I, if I hook into a fish here, how am I gonna land it? Where am I gonna go? I guess over here, that's probably my best bet. Let's fish the left side first. Nothing. Over to the middle. Ooh, I think a fish went for it. Yep, there we, ooh, little fish. Got him. Little guy, by far the smallest one yet. Well, this fly seems to be working really well. I like it, I don't, I don't fish yellowish, brownish flies too much. I fish red quite a bit, but not yellow, so I'm happy with it. Okay, so that came from kind of the middle over here. Let's cast again to that area but the far middle, if that makes sense. There we go. I think I was a little bit late in setting the hook on that one. I wasn't quite, ooh, I just saw that this fish spooked another fish that was bigger. Oh, and it came off. Four more casts. One. Nothing. Two. Nothing. Three. Nothing. Four. Fish. I'm glad I said four instead of three. I think the fly already came out. I think it's stuck on my backpack now, so let's take a look at him. And I'll let him go. How about this upper section? Anything in here? Yes. Oh, came off when I reached for the line. That is always the risk you run when you reach for the line. Got one. Ooh, that's a good fighter. That's a good sized fish. No, it's caught in the in the foliage there. It's actually kind of convenient. The plants helped kind of pin the fish down so it wouldn't run anymore. Very nice, very pretty. Well guys, I think that'll do it. After that last pond, I continued to go upstream, but it became a stream, a very overgrown stream. Like this is the kind of terrain we're dealing with here. 
and I can't really access the creek to fish it. So I'm gonna call it a day there. I caught nine fish, but it was great to fish a new stream in Colorado. I've only fished three streams in Colorado. So it's, it's all very new to me, very exciting for me. And of course this was a new species for me to catch. So it was, it was especially fun. Had a great time. Sorry for the wind noise. Sorry for the camera blur. I'm doing my best guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.